Are you trying to transition from night shift to day shift? My name's Emma from The Other Shift and I want to help you do this smoothly. <sighs> Hello guys, thank you for checking out our channel. As I said, my name's Emma and together with my husband Daniel, we run this website called The Other Shift which we help shift workers and those working night shift or anyone on an ir irregular roster be happy and healthier while you're working these sort of strange irregular shifts. And today we're talking about how to transition from night shift to day shift. You are either maybe doing this because you've got a couple of days off and you're a permanent night shift roster and you just feel like being social or you're a rotating shift worker like me, I'm an emergency nurse and I work shifts all over the place. So this switch for me is something I have to do very often. I can't say I've really got made it down to a fine art, but I figured out some things that have worked really well for me and some things that haven't. So that's what I'm gonna go through today and hopefully you can pick up on some special little gems and apply them to your own lifestyle. Let's get into it. So when you're making the switch from night shift to day shift, there's a couple of different methods uh, that you can use. So I'm gonna go through them step by step. This first one that I'm gonna talk about is something that I personally use. When you're on your last shift, so let's say you've worked four night shifts in a row, you're finishing on a Wednesday morning, let's just pretend. On the Wednesday morning, what I like to do is come home, have a shower, and I honestly, I put on my blue light blocking glasses that I've talked about before that help me, help my sleep hormones get into the mood that I want to sleep and they block out that blue light so I can still use my phone. Uh, I can still wind down to the garbage morning TV just to watch nothing for a minute. And then it gets uh, my brain into the mood that I do want to sleep. So I pop these guys on and I will sleep until about one o'clock. So it's about sort of three, four hours, depending on what time I actually get to sleep. But it's critical at that one o'clock when your alarm gets off that you get up. When that alarm goes off, that is the hardest time to actually get out of bed. Like It is so hard and it doesn't matter how many times I've done it, it's still so difficult for me to actually get up. So to make it easier for myself, I have to have something booked. Some sort of appointment that I've either pre-arranged very far in advance, so maybe the dentist, uh, a hairdressing appointment, some sort of specialist, some, someone that I can't cancel on. Also booking something in with a friend, so if maybe you're gonna go out for a late lunch with them or you're gonna go for a walk or catching up with someone who you haven't seen for a while. And the other thing is maybe some going to do some exercise that you've pre-paid for. So doing a spin class, doing some sort of CrossFit, Anything that you've prepaid for can be a really good um, method to get you out of bed. If you just purely set your alarm and you've got nothing booked, you have a much higher tendency just to press that snooze and forget about the day. Before you know it, it's six o'clock at night and you don't have night shift to go to that night and you've totally thrown your rhythm and you're not gonna be able to sleep. So this first method, go to bed at eight o'clock, Eight, nine o'clock, sort of after you've got something nice in your belly, I'll link in some breakfast meal ideas as well if you're totally stumped with this. I'll leave them uh, below this video. Wake up at the latest for me um, when I work a 9.30 till 7 a.m., so a 7.30 roster, is when uh, no later than 1.30 when I'm getting up. Make sure you've got something organised. Um, I squeeze, if I do have some sort of lunch date, I do book in, um, I have to do some exercise that day. I have to wear myself out, I have to work up a sweat, so my body actually feels exhausted by the time I do sleep, you know, maybe around nine o'clock at night. So this is uh, option one if you wanna try this. This second option, which absolutely does not work for me, I've tried it once or twice, but it doesn't work, but I know for some people absolutely swear by this method, so I thought it's worth saying. When you finish your night shift, so let's say you finish at 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning, don't sleep. Stay awake all day. I know these um, night shift workers drink a heck of a lot of coffee and try to stay away from really carb-heavy foods while during the day. 
And then they're pretty much a zombie by the time it gets to sort of seven o'clock, even six o'clock at night. And then they pretty much guarantee me that they're gonna have a full night's sleep. When I tried this, I lasted till about 4 p.m. and absolutely lost the plot. And I think Dan, my husband, actually even forced me to go to sleep because he couldn't stand to be around me any longer. So if, but if you can do this method, um, it's highly recommended by some people I work with. So that's option two. So option three carries on a little bit from our previous one, number two. So I don't, depending on your workplace, you will or won't be able to do this method, but uh, where I work as a nurse, we have a shift that runs from five o'clock, 5 p.m. to 1 a.m. Uh, and some night shift workers absolutely love this shift. So they, let's say they finish um, in the morning, so they finish at seven o'clock, they go home, they sleep or not sleep for a couple of hours, and then they start another shift again at 5 p.m. I know this sounds absolutely nuts, I've done this a couple of times and it actually kind of works to put you back on schedule because you don't have a choice. But for me, I, I had to sleep and I tried to sleep for sort of six hours, a little bit longer uh, during that day period before I had to get you know back up and leave for work at about 4.30 p.m. Uh, it's funny, the energy that you do have, if, if you do have this shift at your workplace, give it a try next time, request the shift and see, you know, maybe if this does work for you. I apologize in advance if, the, if this doesn't work and you've requested it and halfway through the shift, it's totally not working. I apologize in advance, but at least you know for next time. So regardless of which method you chose, either one, two or three, there is probably a high chance that your body is like, what have you done to me? I'm meant to be at work right now and you're trying to sleep. What the heck's going on? Help me out. So recently we published a blog post about what to do when you're not tired, which we'll link again in the description below this video. But there's probably five or six things I wanted to go through, which I have to do every time when I'm making this switch to make sure I do actually fall asleep. So let's get into those. So the first one I wanna talk about is exercise. I did mention this earlier, but exercising while I'm making the transition between night shift and day shift is absolutely critical. I have to feel worn out for my body to adequately go to sleep. There's a couple of things you can do, either going to the gym, if you do have a gym membership, going to the gym, getting a good workout. If you don't or can't afford a gym membership, totally fine, you can um, run some sort of home circuit, set something up in your lounge room, push the couches to the side and you can do a good workout at home. I'll leave a link to a home workout and some equipment that you can use uh, in your home gym. The third thing that is my go-to is jumping rope. Skipping as much as I want to hate it, I kind of love it because within 10 minutes, 10, 10 on a good day, maybe eight, um, I absolutely get a sweat up, my heart is pounding and I've had a really good workout. So if you're stuck for time and you just actually can't sort of be bothered doing anything. Jumping rope is something I highly, highly recommend if you just need to get it done. The second thing is wearing blue light blocking glasses. I know I mentioned this earlier, but I love them so much. I just have to mention them again. Again, these block out the blue light. So now you're back on day shift. Put these on about two hours before you go to sleep. So if that, if you're looking at a 10 o'clock bedtime, put them on at eight o'clock, leave them on while you're cooking your dinner, brushing your teeth, watching TV, anything. Leave them on, you'll love them. Hopefully it'll help you fall asleep and you won't wake up feeling too groggy like you would with melatonin. The third thing I want you to focus on is making sure your room's not too hot. If you've got a ceiling fan, turn that bad boy on. If you've got a standing sort of pedestal, pedestal fan, absolutely use that or use the thermostat to control your room. You don't wanna wake up sweaty and feeling hot. Your dreams are wild if you're anything like me and you get too hot. So make sure that your room is at a nice temperature that you can sleep. The fourth thing I want you to focus on if you're interested in getting to sleep is your sense of smell. Using things like essential oils in lavender or vanilla through a diffuser can be an absolute lifesaver. I wasn't really into this and didn't really know much about them until my beautiful sister introduced me to this because she bought all the books and she read all the things and she just said, you night shift workers, you need this. 
So if this is something totally new for you, lavender is really cheap. It's a very small investment, so you can try it out. If you don't like it, uh, it's a couple of bucks. So I highly recommend using lavender and or through a diffuser uh, as the fourth option. I'll leave our recommended sleep aids uh, in the description below this video and you can check out which ones we recommend. All right, the fifth thing that I recommend is using some sort of sleep music to help you relax. Often people, the first thing that we do is we reach for our phone or we turn on the TV if you're having trouble sleeping because we think that's gonna help us wind down. But actually it's that blue light thing again that we spoke about that's saying, oh, it's sort of waking up your sleep hormones. So your body goes, oh, okay, I'll be ready to get up and we're ready to, we're ready to start the day again, are we? Which is the total opposite to what you actually want. So I recommend listening to music. Either you can put your headphones in or you can get these amazing sleep masks that have got wireless headphones in them. Um, I'll link that in the description below as well. So just listening to music or some sort of sleep meditation or even like an adult, uh, some sort of an adult storybook can help you focus on something else that's maybe not your thoughts and help you do sort of mindful meditation. So there may be times that you've tried everything that I've just said. You're like, yeah, yeah, I've tried everything and I'm still laying here, I'm still staring at the ceiling and you're getting more hot and more flustered and nothing's working. What I recommend when this happens, because probably it will happen, get out of the bedroom. Go somewhere else, maybe fold some clothes, iron a couple of shirts, maybe do your washing. Remember to put your glasses on when you're doing these things to, because all that light is gonna um, wake up those sleep hormones again. But actually doing something and breaking the cycle of that I can't sleep and then trying again in half an hour can work wonders. I've a couple of times, I hate to admit this, but have gone and slept on the couch and I've actually slept okay. A couple of times there I thought, Dan thought there was some sort of problem because you wake up three nights in a row and I was on the couch. Anyway, it just happened to work for me in that time. I don't know if it was too hot in our room or what it was, but sleeping somewhere else and trying to sleep in a different room may be able to help. Try not to look at the clock when you do wake up and trying to count, well, how many hours I have until I have to wake up again. You want to look at the clock. I don't know why we do, but we do. Try not to, try to resist the urge, put that music on, try to distract yourself from something else because you're gonna be so fixated on what the time is and how much time you've either slept or how much little time that you've had. Either one, you're not probably gonna be happy with the answer, so try not to look at the time. If just for a second we talk about your night shift roster and sort of being smart with how you are grouping your nights together. If you work permanent night shift, obviously this doesn't apply to you because you've already got a set roster. But for nurses or people who work a rotating roster like myself, there's a few things that we can do to be a little bit smart when we're requesting our shifts. With most workplaces, you have to do a certain amount of nights compared to your days, yeah? So, as much as probably maybe some of you don't want to do nights, we have to to be fair to everyone else. Statistically, more people like day shift than what they do night shift. So what I'd recommend is instead of doing one random night here, one random night here, try to do maybe two or three or even four nights in a row, um, doing it in a bunch and then doing that for a month. And then in another month, you do another set or you know maybe in two weeks, you do another set rather than sort of these random nights that you have to make this switch so often, give your body time to sort of get into some sort of routine so you are able to sleep. I found a really nice balance for me is three nights. Three nights is nice, four nights sometimes is too much and anything over that I'm just not, I'm just not a very nice person. But you have gone into some sort of routine and I have done it before, but if I was to choose, I would choose three nights in a row. So that's just something to think about next time you are sitting down to do your roster. Also think when you are doing your roster requests, what are you doing after your night shift is finished? If you did wanna do that five o'clock shift, sort of after you finish, this is a really good time to request it. But if you are the sort of person that does need sort of three night, three days, four days to get back on day shift, you need to request that. Otherwise your roster manager is just gonna 
throw nights in willy nilly and throw you back on days because they really have no idea what you want because they're not a mind reader. So be proactive with your roster, know when your roster lockout dates are and hopefully there won't be any surprises with your next, uh, when you get your next shift schedule. All right, there's two final things that I wanted to say about making the dreaded shift between night shift and day shift. The first one is getting outside and enjoying some vitamin D. When you've been on night shift, you've deprived your body of this beautiful vitamin that's keeping your bones strong. So I recommend booking some sort of social event, getting outside, going for a run or going for a walk, and maybe instead of going to the gym, leave that for tomorrow and get some sun instead. It not only uh, helps your bones, but it helps your uh, body sort of reset and it starts telling everything, hey, I've switched, I've switched back. I'm on day shift now, not night shift, and I wanna sleep tonight. So get outside, enjoy some vitamin D, uh, and hopefully reset your body clock. The final thing we wanted to talk about is what you're putting in your belly. Just sticking to really healthy meals, lots of color on your plate, bit of protein to keep you full, um, and try to avoid having some sort of takeout, even though I know you wanna reward yourself for finishing the night shift. You've done a great job, but maybe reward yourself in another way. So just in summary, making the shift between night shift and day shift is hard. I wish there was some sort of special pill or something, some special song that I could play you that would make this transition easy, but unfortunately it's just not. So just as a quick recap, either the day that you finish, go home, sleep for a couple of hours, have something organized, get up and then hit hit the hay that night, you know, at sort of nine, 10 o'clock at night, or don't sleep at all and you'll be absolutely exhausted by about six o'clock. Be smart with your roster, use some sleep aids, get out of bed if it's been, you know, sort of half an hour, 45 minutes, you kill, still can't sleep, get out of bed, do something for half an hour and then try again. This is this transition is hard. Be kind to your body. Listen to it. If it's tired, have a nap. Feed it with healthy food. And I'll be thinking about you during your next transition between night shift and day shift. So thank you for watching. Again, I'm Emma from The Other Shift. If you have any comments about making the switch, please leave them below this video. I would love to check them out and see how you guys manage this switch. Um, if you wanted to check out the full blog post of um, this making the switch between night shift and day shift, I'll leave that in the description below this video. Thanks for checking it out. Enjoy your next shift. We'll see you soon.